Hello, and welcome back to Faros's little journey across Drang Lake. Here we are at the Cardinal Tower within the Force of the Fallen Giants, about to head over and take on the second of the Giant's Memories. We already cleared out the first one that holds, uh, what's his face, Captain Drummond? Corporal Drummond? I forget his actual rank. I believe he is actually a captain, so let's give him his proper respects. Captain Drummond. Poor man was the last of his line to be struck down here defending from the giants as they assaulted Drang Lake. But it was for the greater good, as they say. They managed to hold off the giants, and Drang Lake, while a ruined husk of a civilization, did not fall to the giants. No, instead it fell to the plague of the undead that arose from within. Vendrick fought against the undead, but was unsuccessful, as he himself also succumbed. Kind of sad, but that is the story, that is the cycle, and that is what happened. Here we're coming into the second giant's memory, and are about to grab another giant's soul, Oro the poor chap, is now a deceased giant, but here we are, invading his last little moments, as... No one's really sure, to be honest. We're a memory, but what does that mean? Do we have actual effects within the world? Is all of this simply a retelling of events long since past, placing us at the forefront? Or is it none of the above, and it's some strange amalgamation of an alternate dimension? and a complete fantasy. No one's really sure, but the items you take from within these memories very much exist. You even manage to get the giant's kinship in one of the final memories. And from there, you can take that to the Throne of Want, and the golems that are standing within the abyss below will actually heed your orders and form up in rank and file to carry you across. This is the power that allows you to cross that little gap over the abyss within the basement of Drang Lake Castle and actually seat the Throne of Want. Not entirely sure why Nishandra doesn't build a bridge or any number of other really simple solutions to the problem, but ow. See, standing there can get you hit. But it is just strange to note because, honestly, it seems like that's the only thing that's stopping anyone from just walking right on in the open kiln. If it is indeed a kiln. We don't technically have confirmation on that, but I'd be willing to believe it. Am I starting this memory short in a bunch of Estus? I am. That is a mark of a terrible player, people. Remember not to do that, because... That is a really big setback, especially because I am going to take some falling damage right here. Not a whole lot, but I want my Grand Lance. It is a massive quality weapon. What's not to love? Run right across, and here we are. We get a little bit of a chance to react after we open that up, and that's us up, up for the backstab, which is going to Im immediately kill him. Great swords are some of the strongest backstabbing weapons in the entire game, now that daggers have been so thoroughly nerfed. I still think the Mailbreaker is going to win out versus certain opponents, but generally speaking, if, if you have a bunch of weapons on hand, an Ultra Great Sword is probably going to do you best out of your options. Come on down here. You want to make sure this giant falls down. And then you can head on over and backstab him while the ballista. Oh, not a backstab? No, oh dear. I did not actually know that these uh, bits of oil on the ground were ignitable. And apparently, I might not actually want to ignite them because it looked like that giant was kicked into some strange, devilish frenzy that I've never seen him do before. Not entirely certain, but. I don't want to see a repeat, so let's avoid that, if at all possible. There's a bunch of items lying around. 
for you to pick up. And there's friggin' archers up there, but I have ranged weaponry of my own with which to combat them. So as long as I keep kiting properly and changing my direction every now and again, especially when they're about to fire, they're not going to be able to hit me and I can run up and loot the area unmolested. The final enemies is going to be that giant right there and the two hollows that were operating the ballistae, though it seems that giant took them out, so I'm actually completely clear except for that one giant and the alternate drop down path for... Ooh! He was quick on the draw! Let's see if I can get a roll attack into him. Yeah, oh dear, the ashen mist is thinned. I don't have time to grab the other two items, so I'm just gonna grab the giant soul and warp on out to the bonfire to actually regain some of this Estus and lost durability before I head into the memory of Jag. Considering the lobbing fireballs that that really assail you in the memory of Jag, you don't want to go in with reduced health or reduced Estus because you might run into a bit of a sticky situation. As you can see, end game weapons in early game areas kind of ridiculous kind of just silly I have the key to this but I need my king's ring here we go tag that on and open up this here door it'll open without me but I want to come over and grab this chest just so I'm not wasting time waiting there here we are Ring of Restoration and Torch. Now let's see if that door's all nice and open for me. It is. Sadly, it will actually close on its own after a time as well, so you have to be a little bit quick about coming back here. Doesn't look like it's going to close up just yet, but I'm heading on into the Memory of Jag now. Skip that whole rigmarole, we've seen it before. You'll probably see it again on your own playthroughs, but I want to skip right on through and get into the action. The giant lord here is a really worthwhile opponent. Lots of souls, lots of great stuff in general. Bunch of loot and a free ascetic with which to constantly cycle this boss. You can completely ignore the other enemies in the memory as well as that head is going to do most of the dirty work for you and yeah those fireballs are basically the reason you don't want to come in here with reduced Estus however the smoke screen at the very beginning there is extremely obnoxious bait him into a swipe and come down and swing at his legs and if you're doing 600 damage a hit you're either using the Red Iron Twin Blade or a massive Ultra Great Sword. I'll let you guess which one has higher DPS. <laughs> there we go. Just be an ankle biter. Nothing he can really do to you down here so long as you position yourself smartly. And that's the kill. Very simple. Huge chunk of souls I'm about to get from that. Almost a full hundred thousand with my single two items that increase soul gain and you can just make that run as many times as you want he hits harder and has a little bit more defenses in higher bonfire intensities but not by much so you can really just farm the hell out of him it's actually the fastest way to level up your character to 837 via regular means if you are going to be planning to make your character complete max level without hacking it in, then yeah, the Giant Lord is basically your best option in the entire game for farming that, so do that, get your level 837 character, and just have fun. Don't don't be a tryhard. Don't spend your time dicking over players who are in a high soul memory tier, but nowhere near level 837. That's just no fun. If you're going to get a high-level character like that, just do something mildly entertaining with it. No reason to spoil anyone else's fun. 
And that's what you're doing if you're getting yourself to a ridiculously high level and then thrusting yourself into PvP situations with the regular players throughout the game. Which, you know, if that's what gets you off, sure, but in the end, this is not just your game. If you're going to be messing with someone else's game, that's really messed up. You can see the 30-30 stats that I'm going to need to equip that properly, so I'm going to hold off on upgrading that. Definitely going to upgrade the Sunset Staff, best dark staff in the game. Still not sure if I am going to be using the Pilgrim Spontoon, but it's an option. Still hanging in there. Looking to see if there's anything else. I do want the Grand Lance all the way up. And Lance doesn't necessarily seem like a weapon the Pharos I have in mind would use, but still, it is a great weapon. Quite easily classified as a great weapon. And it's a pure quality weapon as well, so really great there. Just seeing if there's anything else. I might want to use the Sanctum Shield. Because it gets all the way up to 88 physical block without any sorts of scaling involved. And it can be used as a catalyst for all three types of spells, just like the Ladia Blackstaff. And so I might want to have that just to cut down on the amount of catalysts I'm going to need. And while it can't parry, I don't think that I'm going to really need to be parrying in higher level PvP. It is a useful tactic, but it is very difficult to land the timing on, and with such variable lag as I would get normally in a uh, match hosting as a rat bro, I don't necessarily want to rely on it, especially because we saw how useful it wasn't the first time around. But as you can see, that's four souls of giants. There's one more awaiting us at the very tip top of the dragon shrine, so it's that time of year again. Time to head on up to our pilgrimage to the very tip-top, all the way up above the Dragon Shrine, very top of the world really here in Dragon Lake, and get ready to die a lot. Let's be honest, that's, that's probably what's going to happen. Unequip everything I'm not going to absolutely need. What's the highest DPS weapon I'm going to have? Mastered Sword would be decent. Smelter Sword, probably not. Butcher's Knife, maybe. Iron Great Axe? I don't think so. Partisan? No. Nah, Grand Lance would honestly be my best bet. If I'm being perfectly frank, it has thrust damage. I can tack on a uh, old Leo Ring. Most of your attacks are going to be going in while the old dragon is... Not the old dragon, but the ancient dragon is breathing fire, so I'm going to get a lot of counter hits off with it. And it has an incredibly high counter damage threshold, so yeah, I think I'm going to go in with this setup. Just making sure I want the old Leo ring instead of the uh, third dragon ring, but I do think this is going to be the optimal setup. Luckily enough, you can actually bypass the entire set of enemies here in the Dragon Shrine and just run right to the Ancient Dragon. No one's going to bother you. Both of the mace-wielding... Not art strikes, but the male mace... <laughs> I cannot even word right now. Mace-wielding drake keepers can utterly whiff if you're running around them properly and you get some iframes while you're opening that door, so you can just slip right on past. I'm going to want to equip a weapon buff, as well as some green blossoms, just to give myself something to boost my damage while I'm waiting around on the fire-breathing attack. But other than that, I should be nice and ready. Dip to the side. Sadly, the first run versus the Ancient Dragon is, generally speaking, doomed to failure, since he starts in the very middle of the arena, and that's the worst place for him, since if he moves towards you while he charges up his flame, then you're very, very unlikely to be getting out of that anytime soon, so it could just be an auto loss, which is one of the sad things about the fight, is that it's designed so that 
certain methods of facing him are just an auto loss. You can see my wet footprints. That's the effect of the... Can I get four hits? I can. Beautiful. My wet footprints are actually the effect of the... Oh dear. This might just be a loss right this instant. Yep. Yep. I was not running away in time, but... It's the effect of the Pharos Mask. It's wetting me down with its tears. So... It does increase your fire defenses, but... Not by... Not by enough, as you clearly saw. You see, what are my fire defenses right now? Hmm, there we go. 300? That's actually a third of the way there. Could I push it to... No, I don't have the chaos set. There's no way I could push it high enough. Maybe. Maybe. Let me, let me think about this. It's the highest fire resist. 26... 38 on the black boots. Mm. Yeah, 38 looks to be the highest I could get with boots. Let me, ju let me just have a look and see. Black boots, probably going to be black gloves. I can double check a little bit later, but right now I just want to set it all up. Hmm, there was something. Vengarl's Helm? Really? Would not have called that. Mask of Judgment. That's all the helmets. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, of course, the Elan Captain Armor. Which is probably a no-go just for the weight factor alone. Where was I? The black robes, yes. Which have 49 which doesn't get trumped by anything else. And last check is the black gloves. Hmm, there was... Katarina gauntlets. Yeah, not likely. Oh, but also the tattered cloth manchettes. Oh, I am so pretty. Let's have a look-see at this. Fashion Souls just died looking at me, so... Yeah, that and the fire... Ring plus three gets my fire defenses all the way up to 420. Don't even blaze it, because we're resisting this fire. So yeah, no, that's that's not enough. If I'm not good enough, getting enough to make it worthwhile, then let's just keep up the fashion souls. I'd much rather play it that way. Brigand trousers and the mask of Pharos. Oh, I suppose the mask of Pharos would have brought it all the way up to around. 500 or so, but even then, it's still not quite worth it. We can just play it the regular way and make it a one-hit kill type situation, so don't mess up like I did that first time, and we should have a better time of it. Juke him out, get him whiffing, and iframes, iframes please. Roll iframes, buddy. Nope. 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 Yeah. That is something that can happen. If the mace wielding Drake Keeper does not queue up his little whiff move, then he can turn around in time to hit you, and then the sword wielding Drake Keeper joins in, and then it's just all bad. You don't want that. That's not what you want. I wonder if one handing the Grand Lance would give me a better. DPS versus the Ancient Dragon. We can try that again. Because I know I can get a full four swings if I'm willing to dump all my stamina on the Ancient Dragon. And I want to see if I can get a similar amount of swings and damage if I don't dump my stamina while one-handing. Hopefully I'll be able to get in a full four swings. And that should be enough to do good things for me, especially if I do it while he's breathing fire. I don't know how I manage to poise through that every time, but I think it has to do with the uh, actual location with their Ultra Greatsword that they hit me. Attacks around the tip don't have the full stagger damage, I would assume, but I don't quite know. All I know is that hit often connects, but seldom staggers, so I don't know what's up with that. 
Hey, dragon buddy. You keep breathing, and I will just be attacking your toes. Now, I can only get four attacks this way, too. Is this gonna... Yes. Hmm. No. No. That's reduced damage. Why is that reduced damage? Ugh, humbug. I was hoping I could lock him into the cycle of stepping down with his back foot, but apparently they, as being the developers, got wise to that strategy and actually gave his foot reduced damage taking while it's stomping. Which honestly is smart. It's a little bit more balanced to the encounter, but gosh is it frustrating. Because that used to be one of the better ways to cheese him. Oh well. Guess we're going to have to cheese him the old-fashioned way. Lock him up with that. Oh, really? He's going to be jumping towards us, which means we just need to get as far away as possible. And nope, we didn't recognize it in time. That is the big problem, is that using this strategy, you basically have to rely on RNG for him not to do that. And if he does that, you have to hope and pray that you have enough stamina at the time to dash out of the way, and it's not a guarantee that you will. Wait a minute. I'm two levels of hollowing. Yet that was my second... Oh, no. I forgot that I died to the arch... Not the arch... I keep wanting to call them arch drakes, but the drake keepers on my run-up the second time, so... I got a little confused. I was like, I've only died to Ancient Dragon twice, but I effigied one of those times. Forgot that these two did me in once. Swing it about, and come right on in the back door. Ignore anything he's doing. Once I've got the door open, I can book it on through, and he is nothing but a memory at that point. Don't want to take the clip of damage, even though it doesn't really impede my progress any. It's just a little point of pride. Waste a little bit of stamina. Make sure I don't head up here with any damage on me. And book it right on through the fog gate again. He takes too long to reach you, so you can run right on through and face this ancient dragon once more in pitched combat. Take this toe. Honestly, if he only had toe armor, he would be one of the most threatening bosses in the entire game. Maybe I should keep my... I'll take your tail. Maybe I should keep my bow equipped for... Oh! Oh, this was a bad idea. I forgot that he has tail attacks. <laughs> yeah, let's get my bow in here. For moments like these. Though, I don't actually think it'll have the range for it. We can try it out next time. And it doesn't take me into the next weight capacity bracket, so my stamina regen remains unchanged. Just two-hand this and go to town on his toes. I'm wondering... Oh, or you could whiff. That's fine, too. I'm wondering if using the strong attack on the final clip of stamina will actually yield more damage since it is a multi-hit attack. Doing that little dance in front of him just keeps you at the proper range for him to bake the area in front of him long enough for him to trigger the animation. Okay, so it does a little bit of damage, but it might not be the best, especially if it keeps me there for too long. Get that jump for that last little bit of distance just in case. Doesn't look like the short bow is going to come into play any, but... Uh, come on. There we go. Once he, he rears back onto his two front legs, you know you're safe and could just deal him all you want. Okay, you know, now that I actually look at the chunk that goes missing from his health bar, I think it... Oh, dear. No, <laughs> I meant to get my bow out for that, but clearly that didn't work. Sometimes he doesn't take the opportunity to fly... Oh, dear. What is he doing? I'm not quite sure, and I don't like it. 
if ever you can't really get a read on him, just back off. There's no point in risking your life, especially once you've got him down to about a third like this. Do your little dance to summon the fire attack. It's like a fire dance. But after that, he leaves his toesies wide open for you. You can come out in front again, make some distance. Hopefully he doesn't come at you. It should only take about two or three more rounds of this, and he will go down for the count the final time. He's... oh! He is not pleased. Dragon God is not pleased. Oh, gosh! I thought I had it! I thought I'd made the distance, but I caught it too late. He did that leap forward attack, and I bit the dust because of it. Again, that's just such a frustrating way to die, because there's really not very much you can do about it. There's just no real chance to avoid it, because it's going to hit you. By the time you actually are given the notice that you're needing to dodge this one in a special way, it's usually too late, and I think that's the big failing of the fight. Not the fact that it's an instant kill, but because it messes with you and T-Telegraph for its instant kill move is wonky. It is messed up. It doesn't function as intended, since when he jumps forward and flames, if you're not ready for that, you're dead. The only option at that point, I think, is to actually run underneath him. I've never managed to successfully pull it off, since in order to do that, you need to actually have the forethought to run towards him while he's jumping up. Otherwise, you're still not going to have enough time. Ooh. Took a lot of damage just coming up to the boss. That's not good. Hopefully he can't reach me in time. Lovely. Grab my soul sign of zero souls. A little bit of bragging rights there. Slap in the face souls. Always worth it. I say that, but they're really not. So that's a decent chunk of health, but I feel I could do more. Oh, that's been fun, buddy. Have some arrows in the buttocks while I back away. I think I can get out of range of his tail attacks. Yeah, he can't do anything like that. He's just being impotent. Uh, I think I'm at the... Oh, what? <laughs> My bow got caught in the firing animation. I couldn't actually put it down. I was very confused as to what was going on there. He should turn towards me. Nope, he's going to jump up. And not come towards me, which is fine, but... I am at the extreme of the edge, so I'd like to head forward at him a little bit more next time. Hopefully I don't get pushed all the way back like that again. Because once you're at the edge, you just have no room to maneuver. No amount of running back is going to save you if your back's against a cliff. Oh, hello. Going to give me another fire attack, will you? I will take it. And moving your claw isn't going to save you. Though, now you look like you're pissed at me, so I get some bow damage. Lovely. Oh, I don't think I have room to retreat there. So, let's get on to the... Oh, he keeps doing that attack. I will take it all the way to the bank, but I'm only going to take three attacks this time, because I don't think I'll have the uh, timing to get away with it. I don't know what's going on here, but he seems to want to keep breathing fire in front of him, and who am I to disagree with the ancient dragon himself, guys? Like, come on. You don't say no to him. And then he does that, and do I have time? I think I do. It means I'm safe once again, and look at all the spacing I have. I have just the entire field to retreat. It's actually really lovely. Seldom is he this generous, but... I suppose he's had enough of trouncing my dreams and is finally willing to give me over. Oh, no, 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 no. I thought he was going to jump forward again and I was going to be so pissed. I was like, I've waited this entire time. 
You've been so nice to me, and that's that's how you're going to handle me? That's how we're going to do this? I may have come in too close, but he doesn't seem to mind too terribly. Let's me chink away at his little freshly manicured claws. Quite honestly, I don't think they've ever seen any care. Not that you really need to. You are the ancient dragon. People come to you. He is clearly the cream of the crop for all the lady wyverns out there. And as you can see, a bunch of eggs around the place. Who do you think's responsible? Those dinky male wyverns? I don't think so. You come to Big Daddy for such issues. Let's see if I can clear it away. And if he doesn't jump forward, then I have him in the bag. One last combo on his toes. We'll get the job done for the final time. Rear up. Beautiful. B-E-A-U-tiful. I can just afford to ditz around with a sprinting attack there. And that's the Ancient Dragon for you, folks. Took a little bit longer than intended, but it is a finicky fight, subject to the whims of fate, and he was not being very helpful. Let's move back to our semi-regular setup. Get the Varangian shield back. And, as always, a little bit of a victory lap. Deal with some of these little Drake enemies. Pairing them is just so gratifying. I wonder, I think I can actually get the one-shot if I equip the Smelter Greatsword, so let's use that instead. Come on, one at a time. You, with your great axes. No, 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 come on. There we go. Oh, dear. You know, as much as I like to make fun of them, and as much as they do run to their deaths, they do a lot of damage, so if you muck it up like that, like that, or like that, then take heed, you're going to get messed up. Try that one last time. I believe I can... I believe. I believe. There we go. Finally. I kept misinterpreting his attacks, and it's not even a one-shot. Oh, fine. I'll leave. You guys have fun up here. I'm going to human effigy and... Aged Feather on out. You've been a wonderful host. I just killed your daddy-o back here. And I'm gone. Now then, I have all five giant souls, which means I get to pay our olden king a visit. Vendrick is about to get his, and afterwards I can go pick up his soul and armor from the Shrine of Amana. For this, I just want a really small, fast, quick weapon. And yet, I don't really have anything that fits the bill, so we're going to go with the giant, the, the butcher's knife. The giant butcher's knife, I guess, also works. It's a pretty apt description. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing better, so... Switch right on back to the third dragon ring. And, in fact, uh, yeah, no, I want it for the stamina. I was considering swapping out the third dragon ring for the ring of blades plus one, but I'd actually prefer the stamina from getting under the 40% weight capacity that I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Although, let's keep the smelter sword for these leading up scions. Oh, <laughs> Oh dear. I forgot to take out the Bell Hollow, and now I get to reap the rewards. Doesn't matter how many times you ring the bell, they can only spawn four at once, so it's not like I'm going to meet any extra. Ooh, yeesh. But this is almost a one-shot, so I don't have too much to worry about. Especially if I jumping attack. Because if ever you're in almost one-shot range, jump attack and you basically will be in one-shot range. I was like, one of them's in hiding. I only see one of them down there, and I know that there's four. So, faint stone. That's nice of him. Who's going to aggro first? You are. Which means I have to kite a bit before... <clears throat> Kept thinking he was going to be in range for that. Come on. There we go. You too. I can just circle around for... Oh, bollocks. 
<sighs> I'm getting cocky with the parries, but... Oh, that was a delay. So I think it, it might just be best if we take him out the old-fashioned way instead of making a fool of ourselves. Come on. Yeah, Soul Geyser, not today. You, sir. You're easy to parry. All the sword-wielding scions are a lot easier to parry than the uh, um, halberd-wielding scions, but... Make note that no matter what you do or say, the game is immediately going to turn that against you, so... I got what I deserved. Oh, come on. Don't try and parry that. If you muck it up, you're just going to regret everything. Swing. Swing. And another swing. Oh, come on. You coward. Absolute coward. Wait till I'm grabbing an item to come in for the kill shot. Absolutely shameful, especially from... Fendrick's proudest knights. Oh, come on. That second swing's always got consistent time. Oh my gosh. The game hates me. It's official. It's, I'm just not dealing with you. You can have the uber strong attack. There we go. And I get a nice little cleanup kill. Which means we are ready to head on in. Down for Estus because I was mucking about with the silly enemies, but it's no big deal. Fendrick's probably never even going to land so much as two hits on us, so... We should be pretty safe, no matter how much Estus we have. Oh! Two hits with this, and he already aggros. That means we have all five souls. Which is great, because his defenses are so much less because of it. Just hack away. I have an axe, and I am going to cut you down to size. Stamina regen, stamina unleashed. Honestly, attacking is basically just converting your stamina into damage versus this guy, because... He has almost no way of dodging you, and he's just going to sit there and take it. Just slot yourself in here between his, the backs of his legs, and you're golden. You can swivel with him, and whenever he locks himself into an attack, unleash. You'll get some decent counter damage, as well as be completely safe from all sorts of reprisals. And this will be the last combo. Vendrick is down for another... Just ginormous amount of souls. There we have it. And we can head on back to the bonfire. Return to Majula. Oh wait, no. Let's go to the, get his armor from the Shrine of Amana. Then return to Majula to spend all these souls. Nope. Wrong bonfire. Haste makes waste, everybody. Try not to just rush through all the menus, especially when you're recording. You will regret it. You'll feel embarrassed. Everyone's gonna judge you, and it's just terrible. <laughs> Not that you're all judging me, of course. That would be a jerk thing to do. Now then. Now that we're at the right bonfire, we can clear our way onto the proper area that I was aiming for. Well, I think that these guys are going to be too much of an issue. I'm pretty sure I still keep a two one-handed one-shot. And I do, so that's beautiful. Cut them down to size. It's an axe joke, people. I'm going to keep using it until it gets old. And with me, that's probably going to be a while. <laughs> Chop him. I do like the just executioner look of that. Very weighty makes for really nice predictive hits. It's really great in PvP because it has a very wonky timing and extremely good tracking, so oftentimes you'll catch people completely unawares with it. They'll try rolling around you, and by the time they're standing up, they're getting chopped right back down. It's really great for sneaking and damage, especially if they're dodging a hell of a lot. Come right on through here. I'm human, so this door opens before me, and here we have it. The king's own soul, and a facsimile of his armor. It's strange that we actually get his armor here, because it's also there in the crypt, and we don't really know why his soul is over here, because 
he was human in the crypt, as you can tell from his memories. So that means someone took his soul from him in the crypt, brought it back to the Shrine of Amana, and entombed it with a copy of his armor, because his armor is also in the crypt with him. And his armor in its current state is absolutely massive because of all the soul infusion that Aldia has done to all the really humanoid enemies around this time. Yeah, I'm going to save that last little bit of souls for some weapon upgrades. Thank you kindly for your services. And I think I can actually s equip some spell now. I think now would be a good time, especially because I finally have a pair of upgraded catalysts for the job. Anything else I'm going to want to upgrade? <laughs> the Majestic Greatsword. I, I have the stats to use it. And I've never used it before, but I am going to hold off on that. Hmm. Let's see. Sanctum Maze? Probably not. I have enough Petrified Dragon Bone for a single boss weapon, and I really want to use the Wrathful Axe late game. It's a nice quality weapon, has a really cool special move, so let's use that. I do need to pick up the Black Knight Greatsword, which is going to take up 15 of my Twinkling, which means I have one other Twinkling weapon I can upgrade. Major candidates right now are the Dragon Slayer's Crescent Axe, one of these two massive hammers, the Black Knight Halberd, and is there anything else? Maybe? Hmm... No, I believe that's the... Oh, and of course the Majestic Greatsword. So, one, two, three, four different options for what I do with my last little bit. Considering the Black Knight Sword is a Majestic Greatsword, not literally, but descriptively, I think I can stray away from that for now. I already have a really useful axe, so it's down to one of these two. This one weighs slightly more, and I would have to two-hand it, so let's go with the one that I can wield one-handed. And I should have enough souls for one more weapon upgrade. It's going to be a regular Titanite upgrade to plus seven, since I don't... Plus seven? I think it actually will hit plus eight, but I don't have enough chunks to get it all the way up. Hmm. I could... No, that would still only be plus eight. This isn't a great weapon, so I think that's going to be right out. What what don't I have? I think the Sanctum Mace would do well for me, since I already have weapons of pretty much every other type, and the Sanctum Mace is a nice between weapon, in that it's a combination of certain weapon types. So I think that having a combo weapon like that would be a nice touch. If I can... Soul of... A hero, let's use just four of them. It's just a random number I'm picking off the top of my head. Speak. I can talk to Chloan here, grab five of these, and oh, goodness, it's already to plus eight, which means I only needed two. Well, I've got them in case I want another one after that. That gives me quite a selection of weapons to choose from, and I think that's going to be it for this episode. I've got, like I said, great selection of weapons. Going to be able to choose from a lot of things when I finally finish off the playthrough and head on to a final set of videos. Maybe a set of videos, maybe just a single video of high-level Rat Covenant PvP. So, look forward to that coming out eventually. I will see you all next time.